Alright, part three. So, picking off with the um, power coding uh, turned out pretty well. I think I still ended up having to do this part over again also, but um, for the most part, the uh, outside look um, was pretty much where I wanted to be, um, just because it has the drippy flow all going this way, and for all the outside parts, it um, matched what uh, what I was looking for as far as like um, the uh, the dirt and stuff uh, kind of pooling at the top and sort of dribbling down as opposed to you know dribbling backwards, which didn't work out as well. So I thought that there was something missing, so I decided to throw some runes in there. Um, this was I pulled out the uh, I guess they're they're or the Uruk runes. Um, runes are runes apparently. It's just a matter of who's using them. So the uh, Uruk runes, uh, the way they work out, this is Morgul right there, and the test piece on the um, the aluminum. It didn't work out very well there. I tried using like some chisels or even like a sharpened screwdriver at one point, but it didn't work out very well. So I figured I'd just use my Dremel etcher, which ended up working out pretty well. Um, this was the uh, phrase that I put on the uh, the spine, and um, it means uh, nine Nazgul to rule to rule the darkness. I guess um, I f forgot what it was, but um, just so that I had an intelligible quasi-intelligible phrase on there that sort of fit the theme. Um, pay no attention to the, the crappy penmanship. That's probably why I suck at Dremel Foo so much, just because it's actually me. It has nothing to do with my skill. I just have really bad control over my hands. So uh, if you'll notice that once I actually got it in, um, inscribed with the, uh, the etcher, I sanded off a little bit. So this finish right here is actually a little darker because I ended up pulling off some of the power coating from it which ended up working out pretty well because it was uh, the white and green underneath it's still the toothpaste and that's how it ended up looking in the final thing and uh, I, that's why I ended up redoing this one again so the um, I could put the uh, fill in the the marble Some of the screws got replaced with um, set screws so that there wasn't as many of these screw heads sticking out all over the place, but um, I kind of like the way it looked. Alright, so this is one of the uh, LED optics module heat sinks that I ended up using. So I didn't use the other one. Um, I used this one just because I like the, um, the little bit more control over. Um, anyway, I had to cut the... Uh, the stuff out of the side. To, originally I was planning on using an RGB. Um, this is one of the old school um, X-Wing band created uh, custom Tri-Rebels. It's an RGB, but um, yeah, when I ended up firing it up, it looked like crap, so I didn't use that one. I actually ended up just using a white Rebel, and now that I see that the the Cree XBLs are like three times brighter, I'm probably going to swap it out with one of those too, so... Switch plate number one with the uh, the two buttons. Those are actually just uh, three millimeter rivets. It's one of the same ones that I used on my Star Killer to hold everything together. And then uh, I used some contact sheet with strips cut in it to give it a little bit of elasticity. And uh, the switch is just craggled into place. Took apart a R2D2 remote control. Sorry, Mike. Mike gave it to me as a Christmas present. Hopefully he's not so heartbroken, because it still is very useful to me. <laughs> uh, this is kind of hard to tell, but um, there's um, clear packaging tape in here to be insulation for the um, switchbacks so that it doesn't ground out against the, the hilt. So so that one looks like that's the um, speaker cutoff. And this was how I ended up doing the uh, recharge port just chopping all of that off and then bridging these two, bridging these two, so that um, it didn't matter how you put it in, there was no upside down, so that the inner two were going to be the positive connections and the outer two were going to be the negative connections.
and that was the um, the part that I used to make the uh, recharger or the recharger adapter. I don't know what they're actually called. I just found them at a local place here in Okinawa. I don't know where that came from. I think that was um, that's all it is is just like an inch of blade and a bullet tip minus a mirror. But um, that's what I use for the uh, blade plug. And here, I believe everything is installed. More pretty pictures. Just the install process and getting everything where I wanted it to be, I ended up having to recharge it twice just because I used it so much. More weathering. Again, this is all powder coating, and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out just because I didn't really have to go over it again with any paint or touch up and stuff because you, you can. You can see here, this is the white, and this is the bronze with the pooling on the top, but you can still see the green in there. So, again, win. Hello, Grumpy Saber. The two filters that I used, um, I got this, this is one of the old... Uh, Halon Customs and when he used to do color filters and stuff and this is just the cyan from TCSS but um, put them together they make Mountain Dew or so I got that from Obidar he's uh, the one that coined that term and I think it's very appropriate because um, it, it looks like um, halfway between yellow and green it looks green in the pictures but um, it's actually halfway between yellow and green the um, Eyeballs turned out pretty well. It's a cool little feat or uh, added feature, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. And that is pretty much it. Hopefully, you guys liked it, and that's, uh, that's about it. So, see you later.